This was my body. On December 27, 1979, I lay in bed all day. Whether I was asleep or in a coma, later became a subject of dispute. When my breathing became obstructed, Maria! my husband, Klaus von Bülow, finally did as my maid had been urging all day. He summoned a physician. Dr. Poltese? I stopped breathing. My heart stopped beating. By this time, I was certainly in a deep coma, from which I awoke several hours later. By the next morning, I was myself again. There's no reason for all this fuss. Never felt better in my life. This first coma aroused suspicion and fear in the minds of my personal maid, Maria, my son, Alex, and my elder daughter, Alla. From this time on, though they never voiced their suspicions to me, they kept a vigilant eye on Klaus. A year later, just before Christmas, their darkest fears seemed justified. Has Mommy had breakfast yet? Oh, we haven't seen her. My husband did not want our daughter Cosima to see what he had found, so he motioned to his stepson, Alex. Second coma. My pulse was 38. My temperature, 81.6 degrees. Did you call an ambulance? Nicholas, would you ask Robert to open the main gates? We're expecting an ambulance. Mrs. Von Pulisic. No, send an ambulance immediately. Oh. Oh. There's some Belgium outside. Oh. 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 A blanket or anything you can find. All this activity was pointless. You better do an EEG. I never woke from this coma, and I never will. I am what doctors call persistent vegetative, a vegetable. According to medical experts, I could stay like this for a very long time. Brain dead, body better than ever. Enter Robert Brillhoff, former Manhattan district attorney. My two children from my first marriage, Alex and Alla von Auersberg, hired Brillhofer to investigate the case. He put a do not resuscitate order on her hospital chart. They sent Alex and a private investigator back to my Newport cottage, Clarendon Court, to search for drugs. They found plenty in Klaus's closet. On top of that, the hospital lab reported that my blood insulin on admission was 14 times normal, a level almost surely caused by injection. Insulin injection could readily cause coma or death. This encrusted needle tested positive for insulin. Alex couldn't wait to get back Let's get out of here. and show Brillhofer. Now they felt they had the murder outside, weapon. Outside, outside. All they lacked was the motor. Come on, man. He was oh, right. He was right. Yes. yes. <laughs> so what do you think? Oh, he did it. He did it. Of course he did it. Can we win? 100 to 1 against the maid. The maid smeared him on both comas. Look at it. Look at this. It says here. After you realized that Mrs. Von Bulow had not gotten up, what did you do? I came downstairs, and Mr. Von Bulow said that Madame had a very sore throat, and I didn't have to do any work, and she was in bed all day. Madame, 
Mrs. von Bülow. Leave her alone. She's sleeping. She was drinking last night. We didn't get any rest. She's not sleeping. She's unconscious. You must call a doctor. Maria. A half hour later, she had not moved. I went back and forth all morning. Strain over the last several days. Finally, mid-afternoon, Mr. von Bülow spoke to Dr. Portis. Last night. But he lied to doctor. Yes, yeah, she's sleeping now, but she was up earlier this morning to the bathroom and had a soft drink, so I don't think there's any cause for alarm, but I... But she never moved, sure. never got up. She was lying in the same position all day. Later, her heart stops, and Dr. Poltis, he comes and saves her. After they go to the hospital, I'm changing the sheets. I find a puddle of urine. If Madame went to the bathroom, she would not have peed in her bed. Right. Why would Klaus lie about that? Thing with this, you killed her. Hey, wait a minute, Alan. Statute of limitations ran out on that years ago. The rumor is also that I killed my aunt. And that I'm a necrophiliac who injected Sonny with insulin so that I could have my way with her. Please. Your mother's death wasn't recorded for five full days. True. Where were you during that time? In the flat. Where the body was? My mother has my own business. Did Klaus drive me crazy? Even I don't know. But it's true that I took up to 24 laxatives daily, popped aspirin like M&M's, smoked three packs of cigarettes a day, had a problem with alcohol, took Valium and Secanol frequently and consumed large quantities of sweets, despite a medical condition, hypoglycemia, which made them hazardous. As for my state of mind... <laughs> I had not had sex with my husband for years. My schedule was, I woke at 9.30, did a little exercise and shopping, and returned to bed at three o'clock for the remainder of the afternoon. I liked to be in bed. I didn't much like anything else. Hold on here, would you? Welcome to my humble law firm. In the kitchen, our insulin on the needle team. They're cooking up some surprise for us. This is our Brill Hoppen notes team. Mr. Von Bulow, where do you keep the paper towels? Ask Sarah. Sarah used to live here. This. He was up all night. This sort of comment, you do it on every case? Never before. 38 days to write 100 pages, only way to get it done. Here's the black bag team, illegal search team. My uh, son in law lost his room. Well, actually, this is, uh, this is another case that you're paying for. And this is my team. I wish. I, I can't find the damn thing. Hi, I'm Sarah. Oh, a very lovely Sarah you are. Does that really work? Flattery? Absolutely. 
by Chinese food? What do you give a wife who has everything? An injection of insulin. <laughs> How are my prawns? How can one define a fear of insulin? Claustrophobia. <laughs> Is there anything uh, more you can tell us about Alexandra Piles? For instance, is it true that she gave you a deadline of Christmas 1979 to be together? Uh, not really. No, she knew I was looking for full-time work. I worked for J.P. Getty in London. Now, Alexandra assumed that when you did find a job, you'd marry her, correct? Oh, uh, she assumed it. How about when she testified? Do you get a sense that she wanted to get back together? Very much so. In fact, at the trial, she said... I loved him, but I was still caught up in my own anger. And I'm sorry I acted that way then. I loved him, and I was angry. Let me ask you this. Maybe you can't answer. Do you still love him? I don't know. That means yes, doesn't it? It would seem so. In fact, after the trial, she wrote me a letter saying so explicitly. Very... Passionate letter, passionate, um, jealous. But that was the relationship from the outset. That was Alexandra. She was your love slave. <laughs> ah. Well, I think now I'll have my own individual order of ginger prawn. Three weeks before her final coma, Sonny overdosed on aspirin. Can you tell us anything about that? No one maintained I had anything to do with that, Alice. Oh, no, of course not. I'm asking you what happened to her. Well, Sonny had been unwell. Are you all right? Just a, d a dizzy. Well, if you're dizzy, don't go wandering. Beautiful letters. What did you do with those letters? What did you write those letters? <laughs> Later, Dr. Proud said we need to have gone to the hospital, but I wasn't going to take any chances. Why did she take so much aspirin? Well, Sonny always took aspirin. She'd been taking a lot for several days. That's not what our doctor said. Dr. Lucas Lepardis, chief forensic toxicologist, Suffolk County, says that people who take large amounts of aspirin every day never reach that level. He also said the average blood level in cases of death is 60. Hers was 90. So? So, it was obviously a suicide attempt. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah, Alan, do they all want to be prosecutors? We're waiting. Well, I presume she was unhappy. How about we all finish up and go back to the house? We're not going to win this on a technicality, Peter. <clears throat> I've read every case in the last seven years where the Rhode Island Supreme Court reversed. They don't like to make new law. They don't like to discuss broad legal issues. When they do reverse, the grounds are technical, but the reason seems to be they suspect a convicted defendant may be innocent. 
Okay, so everybody get that? True or not? We've got to convince the judges that you are innocent. Klaus, now I do want to hear your side of the story. With pleasure. Innocence has always been my position. First coma. What preceded it? Well, Sonny loved Christmas. It was her favorite season, really. You see, what you must understand about Sonny is that she loved giving more than anything else. Each year, she always made a big bowl of fresh eggnog. Now, that year, she drank a lot of it. How much? Or 10 or 12 glasses. With her hypoglycemia? She didn't always drink like that? Never. She never touched alcohol at all, except on social occasions to overcome her shyness. Or when she was upset. This was not a social occasion? No. We'd been discussing divorce all afternoon. subject of your work coming between us. Isn't it just a pretext when the real subject is her? Certainly not. I'm thinking of redecorating this whole fucking house. Then she knew about Alexandra. Yes. How did she find out? Uh, I, um... I told her the previous summer. must be better for you than what you've had to put up with. You're referring to the call girls? Yes. I mean, that is where you've gone previously, isn't it? Yes, it is. And isn't this better? Or is Billy Botsky's daughter a call girl, too? This is much better. That was what, uh, July, August? Now it's Christmas time, and you were uh, still squabbling over Alexandra? No, we were fighting about my work. Sonny was... Well, by the evening, she drank so much eggnog that I had to help her into the bedroom. Time for bed, darling. <clears throat> Get me a scotch and soda.
May I at least urinate alone? the water every time she goes in there. If she was already soused, why do you go for the scotch? Because she asked for it. Sonny got what Sonny wanted. It's okay. Hasn't my mother given us enough money? <coughs> Klaus? That night we hardly slept. Your age is perfectly acceptable to retire. I'm already <coughs> retired. I haven't worked full time since Getty. Exactly, it's your ego. You've never had a career, not really. Well, I'm going to have one now. <coughs> oh, come on, Sonny. Your father worked. Do you want the children to grow up thinking a male's place is in a deck chair. Klaus, you marry me for my money, then you demand to work. You're the prince of perversion. I mean, what? Are you trying to destroy our whole family? Oh, no, of course not. I, I, I simply want some intercourse with the world. Shut up, Pam. Oh, what does it matter? <coughs> so, is that it? Another divorce? Okay. <coughs> I'll divorce you. I will. Oh, Two-time loser. <coughs> I'll divorce everybody. I don't want a divorce. I don't want to marry Billy Botsky's daughter. I want to stay with you and I want to work. I need that as a man. <coughs> Why do you why do you believe it's hopeless just because it's up night, Klaus. Sonny, you know I love you. Good night. And the next day? Well, Maria's testimony was wildly exaggerated. Sonny was never moaning. Maybe the occasional snore, but... And Maria shook Sonny. Nobody ever shook Sonny. What happened when she regained consciousness? After the first coma, well, it was kind of absurd. Everybody was angry at me. OK. 
Thank you ever leave me alone. <laughs> Why did you do it? I would have been better off. You would have been better off. What you want me to say? But I'm sorry I saved your life? Yes. Say it. When I phoned Alexandra to tell her what had happened, she said the same thing. She said, why did you do it? Why did you call the doctor? Are you telling me she wanted you to let Sonny die? No, 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 no. It was more, everybody says Sonny is such an unhappy woman and has nothing to live for. Well, so much for the first coma. The second, of course, was much more theatrical. Theatrical? What is this, a fucking game? This is life and death. Your wife is laying in a coma. You, you don't even make a pretense at caring, do you? Of course I care, Alan. It's just I don't wear my heart on my sleeve. Let's call it a night, okay? Okay, guys, so. As you wish. Three drugs on the meat, right? Amobarbital, Valium, insulin. We can't all be you, Alan. Now, to understand that, you must understand that after the first coma, she went into a complete rain. Where are they? Did you take them? Certainly not. Take what? My pills, you moron. Valium, suck and all. You took them, didn't you? My dear, I've long since stopped interfering. Well, who? My children wouldn't dare. Oh. Oh, well, I know. Where are you going? It's my lovely mother, isn't it? She's behind all this. She's in cahoots with Maria. Well, just because she had all the money before I had all the money does not mean she's my lord and master. Of course not. I am your lord and master. Just kidding. Maria loves me too much. It's unhealthy for her. And it's certainly no fun for me. There. We'll see if that ugly little maid of mine can sniff this one out. And what are you going to do with all that? I'm not going to tell you. I assure you, it's not going to be among my affairs. Odd she used that word. You realize the prosecution thinks you ground up the drugs so you can inject Sonny? And frankly, this, this nose drop business is pretty far-fetched. But consider the pattern, Alan. It's public record that Sonny used drugs. Her behavior here of hiding them in liquid 
so that no one will find them. It's your classic alcoholic buying pints of whiskey and stashing them all over the house. You're right. Of course, I mean, I mean, you've always been right, haven't you? This is the most dangerous case I have ever worked on. You find that exhilarating? No, I do not. I am breaking every rule. Because the best way to win is to proclaim your innocence, and I have never done that for anybody. And the problem I got is I see who you are. You'd do anything to win. So would you. Yeah, but you don't trust the legal system. You're saying I'd manufacture witnesses? Affidavits? No, but you would sacrifice me. Oh, please. See, the more I believe that you are innocent, the more nervous I am. I go out on a limb for you. You're proven guilty, I look like an asshole. My reputation, my credibility, my career, destroyed. That's the risk you're taking, isn't it? Yeah, well, fuck you. Fuck you, man. I'm glad we understand one another. It's easy to forget all this is about me, lying here. To most of you, my name means coma. My second marriage means attempted murder. Everything that came before, everything beautiful does not exist in the public mind. No one thinks of how I loved my children. Look at Cosima. And Alex, of course. And Alla. And certainly no one cares about Klaus the way he was when I fell in love with him. When Klaus and I first met, I was married to the dashing young Prince Alfred Eduard Friedrich Vincent Martin Maria von Auersberg. It was 1964, seven years into my first marriage. It seems that my first husband, Alfie, as he was called, had vowed to be unfaithful with every pretty girl in Europe. <laughs> he was having quite a success. <laughs> and so, I was unfaithful with Klaus. Wildly unfaithful. Happy memories. But it's not the passion I remember most. That's what I mean. It's the tenderness. That's one of Frank's plays. I never liked people much, not as a rule. Klaus was somehow different. Not a normal person, I guess. It's all right. Do it again. Come see. Oh. One of those things you never forget. Of course, now he lives in my apartment, my bedroom, my bed. Cold, isn't it? Cold and brutish and the way of the world. Looking at him now, the issue seems simple. Is he the devil? If so, can the devil get justice? And all this legal activity, is it in Satan's service? 
to Klaus von Bülow? Can't argue with that. But it's speculation, exaggeration. You keep working on it. Totally inflammatory. Let's go over this. Okay, we went over it once. I just wanted you to see if it. Uh, what, what is this? Illegal search? It's a classic technicality. It's a guilty man's argument. Come on, this is different. Usual Fourth Amendment case. You're trying to exclude evidence. No, no, it's bad no, for your client. No, no, same thing here. Same thing. No, this search destroyed evidence. No fingerprints, no inventory. Yeah, what's left hurts, Klaus, but under Brady. The state cop, has an obligation. Wait, 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 wait. The cops tested the drugs from the illegal search, right? Yes, okay. Yes, and we are saying that that test constituted a second illegal search. There are precedents. So, Walter no, Jacobson Morgan. I know there Morgan. are precedents. I know the law is on our side. I'm not debating that. What I'm trying to do is... No, you're debating me, personally. Why? I'm debating strategy. Okay? I'm not, I'm not debating you. We're all on the same team. Are, are, are we on the same team or not? I don't know. Well, if we seem to be. But then why don't I feel it? I thought this was strictly professional. It was. That's bullshit, I Alan. Look, I brought you... I, I asked you to work on this case because I think you are a good lawyer. I think you're a fine lawyer, too. You're a great lawyer. But you give everything you have to the law and you forget the people you care about. My clients are the people that I care about. Obviously. What I care about, all I care about, all I fucking care about is this. This case! And making, ma making the best possible appeal that we're capable of doing, okay? Now, you can make your argument better, Sarah. You know that. I know that. So why don't you just do it and cut out all the bullshit? Well, you always have to have the last word, don't you? Why do you think this case fascinates people? Because one time or other, every man is driven crazy by his wife, and in his secret heart, he wants to do exactly what Klaus is accused of. Kill her in some sly, silent way that can't be detected. Klaus is a scapegoat. Someone has to suffer for the sin that we all want to commit. Alan, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous, you're right. <laughs> what do you got? The prosecution's case is based on a theory. The needle in the bag plus insulin on the needle plus insulin in her right, blood. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay, okay, fine. In Derrick, this Rhode Island Supreme Court, these same judges said that in a case based on circumstantial theory, case falls apart if any part of the theory is weak. If there's a weak link in the chain, then you, you throw the whole chain out? Exactly. Peter, that's very... That's good. That's, that's very good. Oh, yeah, this is good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Whatever, what do you want me to do now? Uh, what I want you to do? I want you to find as many alternative theories as possible. Hey, hey, hey! Come on, come on, come on. There's only seven days left. Dersh, I'm sorry, but you better come downstairs. Hey, Dersh. Sorry to get you out of bed. What do, what do you want? More money? Can you get more? Can I have a glass of water, please? No. The reason I'm here... My affidavit is inaccurate. Great. That's what I need right now. That's well. Yeah. I left something out, something incredibly important. Remember I gave Alex's drugs to a woman at Clarendon Court? Yeah, so? Well, that bitch was definitely Sonny Von Bulow. <laughs> David. This, uh... 
This is bad. It looks bad. I, I, I've met with you, what, five times now? And all of a sudden... No, it's not sudden. I think I always knew, but I became convinced by staring at pictures of her. Well, we can't use your affidavit unless it's truthful. Are you sure this time? I swear. On the body and soul of my mother. Poor boy. Put in this change and make him go over every word of the affidavit. Uh, can I use your men's room? Klaus had injected her, he would have thrown away the needle, right? Sure, if he threw away the insulin. Why keep the needle? Hey, Klaus is strange, but he ain't stupid. He is arrogant. Is that a crime? Sometimes. Why are we even discussing this? It's obvious the kids framed him. Whoa, you changed your tune. Mm. Oh. A frame-up doesn't mean he's innocent. The kids could have framed the guilty man. Yeah. Do you know what it is? Okay. Word in Rhode Island is that the state can't lose. It's got an ace up this sleeve. What is it? He's going to try to find out. All right, my friend. Friend, I like that. Nothing personal. Okay, no students, no witnesses. Second coma, let's hear it. Well, Alan, strange as it may seem now, in okay. retrospect... Klaus, cut the bullshit. December 20th, 1980. Sonny was unwell. We'd been arguing all afternoon. I'd at last been offered a new position in the oil business, which would have meant my spending some time in Europe. Well, the discussion must have escalated because I went to talk to the children. This cargo will bring 50,000 gold florin from any rebels worth the name. 50,000 florin? That's a pretty good take. I... I have something to tell you about. We are heading for the biggest and the best pirate days ever. I... Here's the rich town <coughs> round number. Musket, 3,000. Powder cake, it looks as if... 1,500. Uh, as though... Mommy and I are going to have to split up. Because my work is something she just cannot tolerate. My mommy says things like that. But she always gets over it. Yes, but this has been going on for too long. I'm going to Europe for a few months in the new year. And this will probably lead to a split. It's all right, she'll get over it. Yeah, well, Alexander says that conversation happened the next day. Can you imagine anything more absurd than announcing your intention to divorce a woman who's just fallen into a coma? No. That evening, everything seemed normal enough. Not cheerful. But then we didn't usually giggle at mealtimes. Despite her doctor's warnings about sweets, the only thing Sonny consumed was a sundae. After supper, I went to finish off some work in my study. Well, what should we do? The others decided to chat in the living room. Oh, that would be lovely, but first I need to go to my, to my room. Just... 
After about an hour, I dropped in on them. Darling, would you care for anything? Mm. If there's some chicken bouillon left. Ah, look. Your work? I'm totally flummoxed. I can't get the figures to make any sense. Why don't you call your friend Deborah? I doubt she'd be in Saturday night. So, Deborah, I think you'll agree that's 728. Right now. But Deborah was home, and we did talk for some time until. Got five. Close. Hold on. Come quick, Mummy's not well. Deborah, can I call you back in the morning? Thanks. Her voice got very weak and she almost fell down. I had to help her. Somebody open a window. I find the chill reassuring. Now I must speak with Clara. Late night. Good night, Good night. Not as if Klaus has time to talk. Are you going to work every spare moment right through Christmas? Hmm? Is your work really so fascinating? Or are you trying to drive me away? Because if you are, it's succeeding beautifully, because I don't want this. I didn't marry you for this. I could have had anybody. With my money, anybody. Well, say something. Do something. Be a man! I already have a butler. Do something! I don't want this! I don't! I don't want this! Please, I don't! I don't want this! The same conversation as the previous year, only this time with greater venom. You've always been afraid of me. It's not because of my money. It's basically because you're a coward. Because your pitiful masculinity is so fragile, you can't stand the idea of confrontation, so you go off with Miss Botsky. Good night. As was usual, I was awakened before dawn. I let the dogs out, as was customary. I went back through the bedroom to my study as quietly as possible. I did not notice if my wife was in bed I did not notice if the light was on under the bathroom door. Had it been on, I wouldn't have given it a thought. I did my exercises, shard, and then I called Deborah Knowles. Well, I mean, it's, it's stable and it's profitable. Can anyone really believe, if I was trying to murder my wife, that I would spend an hour going over a tedious set of figures? After the call, I passed through the bedroom again. I remember it was freezing. By this time, Sonny was certainly not in bed, and I heard water running in the bathroom. 
I had breakfast, walked the dogs, and on my return, asked the children where Mummy was. Has Mummy had breakfast yet? Well, we haven't seen her. Sonny? Her bathroom was her private sanctuary. No one entered it, except the maid, of course, to clean up. Sometimes she stayed there for hours or so, it seemed. One can only speculate what goes on behind a closed door. Sonny, who there? I hesitated even to knock. Darling? Oh, God. Once I'd ascertained she was breathing, I went to fetch Alexander. Why not call an ambulance first? Oh, panic, Alan, panic. I mean, I, 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 I needed to talk to somebody. That, that was no, I wasn't worried that she was breathing normally. It wasn't, it wasn't like the year before. I mean, in retrospect, it seems absurd, but I looked at her upper lip. She had blood on it. Too smart for his own good. Alan says it will work if the prosecutor takes the bait. What do you mean, bait? Argues the evidence. Your Honors, introduction of new evidence on appeal violates every principle of jurisprudence, every statute, Every precedent, every rule of ethics. Oh, he's nailing us right off the bat. I am not going to stand before you and argue Mr. Von Bulow's guilt. However, I have no choice but to address Mr. Dershowitz's arguments one by one. First, the matter of the encrusted needle. So, now it's up to the judges. Tell me what you really think. I think it's easier to love somebody than to live with them. Love is fantasy. Living is work. I'll say. And those people don't like the work. But if you don't do the work, the love dies. And nobody wants to deal with that one. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. The love died. Sonny couldn't accept it. So Klaus tried to kill her? Maybe. I don't agree. Face it, all we had to do was prove that the state made a lousy case. We didn't prove that Klaus was innocent. We couldn't. We didn't have to, and he probably isn't. He isn't? You mean you think... I mean, so he didn't inject Sonny with insulin. So what? Break it down. First coma, no problem. Even the attending doctor thought it was caused by hypoglycemia, loss of air to the brain, and so on. All right, but what about the second coma? I mean, why does Klaus act so guilty? Hey, come on. Wouldn't any man feel guilty if his wife was suicidal? Yeah, so, so, maybe she took the sleeping pills with the intention of killing herself. But how did she end up lying on a marble floor in a freezing bathroom with her head under the toilet bowl? How about this? Sonny wakes up miserable. Second marriage is over. Children are leaving home. What's to live for?
When she was found, her nightgown was hiked over her waist. Exactly. How did it get there? Okay, let's say she's standing at the sink. She has to pee. At exactly the same instant, the drugs hit. The body convulses. She grabs the nightgown. I don't buy that. It does seem far-fetched. Well, so is the truth sometimes. Oh, Bull, I think she took the barbiturates the previous night. And let's say he saw her take them. Or she told him she was going to before they fell asleep. This time, he wants her to succeed. Sonny? Maybe there's some way he can help her along. Of course, the open window. Zero degrees. Somebody might see her there. The action of dragging her would naturally pull up the nightgown. cold, how long could she survive? Remember what Sonny said? I would have been better off. You would have been better off. Because the law is a blunt instrument. It is not a rapier. It is a cudgel. Tomorrow, death penalty. Which reminds me of the comedian who said, I don't know why they call it the death penalty. That's no penalty. You are out of the game. <laughs> Good news. Great news. And more good news. The decision came down? They just announced it. Five zip. We murdered him. Browns? Well, they got the Brillhofer notes. And that silly, silly guilty man's argument, search and seizure? Federal or state? Both. That's important. Yeah, it was federal. They could uh, appeal it to the U.S. Supreme Court, but because it's Rhode Island, they can't. We win. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't get too excited until we see Brillhofer's notes. We destroyed their medical case, but their witnesses still carry emotional weight if there's a second trial. Unless... The Brillhofer notes show that they've changed their stories. Good afternoon, sir. Let me get that Thank you. You have Brillhofer's notes? Yes. Well, they're not what we hoped. I knew it. They're much better. No one mentioned seeing insulin when they first talked to Brillhofer. Plus, Maria told them that at Thanksgiving, when she supposedly saw insulin for the first time, she couldn't even read any of the labels. They were all scraped off. What does this mean? It means that if there is a second trial, we can be reasonably confident. Both the medical case and their witnesses are now highly suspect. Uh. Dr. 
Alan. This is Alan Dershowitz. Yes, I know. Hello. Alan tells me, well, things look very hopeful. I knew it would come out all right. Thank you. Yes, Alan, thank you. I am eternally grateful. Hey, this means we'll be getting back your bail, a million dollars. Uh, I know I still owe you, Alan. Please send me your bill. And maybe when you're in New York, uh, we can... We can meet for lunch. I'd enjoy that. One thing, Klaus. Legally, this was an important victory. Morally, you're on your own. Klaus von Bülow was given a second trial and acquitted on both counts. This is all you can know. All you can be told. When you get where I am, you will know the rest. Anything else? Yes, a vial of insulin. Just kidding. 